Peace to the family. This is Soul Consciousness TV. I'm Brother Kupu Shabazz. I have with me a very special guest today. King Norma. King Norma. Hotel family. Peace. Peace. And uh, we're going to do an interview today. And uh, we got a few questions for her. my brother. My All right. Brother. Okay, the first question. Who wrote the Torah? Well... Since the subject and, and topic of the matter is all religions are based off of African spirituality or a spiritual system, the Torah would be the first five books of Moses. But the problem in the in, in, in the fallibility in that is, how can Moses write the first five books of anything if he died in the land of Moab? Or what I'm really asking is, how could he live to write about his death? But we know by historical fact and by historical timeline that King Tut Moses, who was a who was a king or a pharaoh in Kemet or ancient Egypt, matches up with that timeline, and he is buried in the Valley of the Kings. Okay. All right. I have another question. What's the difference between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam? Well, it's like this. All religions are connected, even though they don't know it or not. It can be based off Saturn worship. It can be the Abrahamic religions. But this is the deal. It is kind of like a ranking squad. Judaism is the first five books of Moses, or the Torah, which, which ties into the first five books into the Bible, which ties into the Quran, because all the prophets in the Bible are the prophets in the Quran because in order for the, the, the Quran to even be an established book and Islamism to even be a religion, they had to accept the major prophets of Christianity. Judaism can be described as Dr. Dre. He is on top. Nobody's going in his pockets. Christianity can be described as Eminem. He is a boss but he still has to pay to Dr. Dre or Dr. Dre is going in his pockets. Islamism can be described as 50 cent. He is below at the bottom, but everybody's going in his pockets. <laughs> okay, dang. All right. That was good. Okay, so who wrote the first religious text? The first religious text recorded ever in history were in ancient Egypt or Kemet. Egypt is a bastardized word for Kemet. It simply means bondage. Kemet is the true and original word or the etymology for Egypt, meaning land of the black. Kim, Kim, Kemet. Thus you get the word chemistry, meaning black mystery, dark matter, melanin, to, for, for short, to, you know, you know, to kind of sum it up just a little bit. But the first religious texts are the pyramid texts and the coffin texts. Those were the first spiritual texts ever recorded, or some of the oldest and most original spiritual texts ever recorded. Okay. So what, so what was the first physical Bible? The first physical Bible would be the Sinai Bible or the Sinaitic Bible. I'm going to give you a little story, ladies and gentlemen. Alexander the Greek, or the Great, was one of the first major individuals or, or Europeans to somewhat dominate the empire and take over Egypt. To make a long story short, he ended up getting killed in Turkey, or what was that ancient land at that time, or what they would say is... Iraq or I, I, Iran or or, or 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 Persia, but the point is, his successor was Ptolemy Soter or Ptolemy Soter because the P is silent. Soter means savior, and soteriology is a study of salvation. So once he took over as the first Greek pharaoh, small god, small G O D, he then. Basically, after killing so many, got the priests from Memphis, Egypt to sell out and basically give him all the spiritual knowledge and all the spiritual systems. 
He therefore took all the scrolls from all the different temples and put them into one temple. That would cause people to have to worship in their homes or in graveyards. He basically produced the first Bible. It's called the Sinaitic Bible. In between the Sinaitic Bible and the King James Bible, there are at least 15,000 differences. And it is held in the British Museum. The second Bible that I would say is the oldest would be the Ethiopian Bible, which is 800 years older than the King James Version of the Bible. And that is to say that it is a complete book because unlike the King James Bible, it doesn't have books extracted called the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha would be described as unholy books because if you read the literature, you would understand that that has nothing to do with the Bible and it would be a dead giveaway. One of the books could be the book of Enoch. Enoch was the Ethiopian prophet who saw the spaceships on the mountain and he saw the Nephilim giants. That can never be in the King James Bible. The Ethiopian Bible is written in G's and it is complete with all 88 books. And the only white character in the Ethiopian Bible is the devil. Mm. Hmm. Okay. That's deep. Sure. Okay, so uh, where did Jesus come from? It is quite simple. This is a book, if you can see well, it is called The Historical Origins of Christianity. A man named Jesus the Christ never existed. Jesus the Christ is nothing but the 2,000 year old version of Horus or Heru. He was the first Christ or anointed one because the word Christ is not a name, it is a title. It simply means the anointing one and it is a level of consciousness. Through your seven chakras, once you reach your crown chakra, that's when you truly find Christ-like consciousness. Through your third eye, which is your pineal gland, or your first eye, that is the size of a conjugal P, and that is your cosmic antenna with the universe into the all, into the divine, or what you call the creator. Okay. All right, we're going to end it. We're going to end it on that.